I mean, free speech has always, always, also been uh, about respect and about understanding and about mutual uh, understanding. It's not about just, you know, people just <coughs> shouting at each other. Professor Halley Afshar, thanks very much indeed. Our last witness is Sarah Joseph, who's editor uh, of a magazine called Email, which is a Muslim lifestyle magazine. Uh, Sarah Joseph, what, what sort of society do you think um, would we live in if we can't make, uh, make jokes or, or, or talk freely about uh, such a, a large section of our population as that represented by Muslims and of the world's population? I don't think it's an issue of uh, humour or freedom of speech. Um, these are not fundamentally at stake. Muslims appreciate freedom, the freedom to practice one's faith is tremendously appreciated, but freedom is precious, like wealth. It's a responsibility, and it's not to be squandered or, or fr frivol frivolously uh, used. But it is something to be subdivided, in your view. No, I think it's or to qualified. be. It has to have responsibility, like wealth. It, freedom is a responsibility upon you, and we also, I think, hopefully, all understand that freedom is not absolute, total. You know, the right to to hurt another um, is not an absolute, and we would see that in relation to to, to race, to uh, other other peoples, other contexts. We realise that we don't shout fire in, in a in a crowded cinema. Melanie Phillips, your witness. Um, it's been said uh, that the reason for the insult provided by the cartoons is that Islam forbids the uh, 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 pictorial representation of the Prophet. I wonder wh why this is said when this is simply uh, not true. Islamic art has often contained images of the Prophet. I think historically there are some images of the Prophet, um, and most of those are veiled, but not all of them. And you have uh, certainly Sufi or, or Shia movements in Iran, although it's actually illegal in Iran, where there are uh, beautiful images or glorified images mm. of the Prophet. It tends to be, however, that iconography of the Prophet and, and, and definitely of God, there's nothing which can be compared onto God, so you can't draw illustrations. Judaism and Islam are both religions of the word, not of the image. Um, but I think that we, we had a situation several months ago where one British paper published a picture of the Prophet and the Muslims said, generally this is not really appreciated. They said, oh, okay, mm -hmm. sorry, and all was resolved. I think what it is at stake is these particular images mm -hmm. and their, their gratuitous stereotypes. It's the image of the Prophet as bomber, of him saying, you know, sorry, can't come into heaven, we've run out of virgins to the suicide bombers. Right. It's him with, with sword and women behind him. It's these but orientalist okay. caricatures. But nevertheless, um, it is the case that people are uh, bombing and murdering people in the name of Islam. And if you are so concerned about avoiding um, religion just insult. Um, what would you say, therefore, to the absolute torrent of um, anti-Jewish uh, vile images that pour out of the Islamic world daily, which v use uh, Nazi stereotypes, Nazi tropes, the hook-nosed, diabolical Jews, the parasites, we get the uh, drinking we'll the blood of children? Well, no, it's, people don't get the message, actually. Well, I think that they should. We don't. Uh, we don't, we don't uh, we, I, there is I would... no comparison between that and these cartoons, surely, which are making a political point. Well, firstly, the f in relation to the first point, that's abhorrent, right? What is, sorry? The images that you, you, you're describing. Um, and then the second point is that by saying that they're making a political point, what you're saying is that Muslims are intrinsically, as the Prophet, as the intrinsic sort of image or, or central point of Islam, so Muslims are intrinsically violent. No, I haven't said that, and you've imputed to me a meaning which I have not said. What I've said is it was a protest against the fact that a Danish author felt that illustrators were being intimidated into not providing illustrations for a completely innocent book. It was therefore a political protest against intimidation being prosecuted in the name of Islam. No, let's that is a very different matter from vile images in the Muslim world which demonize and make diabolical Jews on the basis of their, of their well, race. I agree that those images are, are, are wrong, so you know, that's, that's where we are. But we're, let's, back to these images. We, we're saying, oh, it's all, it's all innocent children's illustration. Let's look at the context. Sorry, you can't just gloss over that. We have the entire Islamic world which is inside fighting now what they call holy war against Europe on the basis of an insult to their religion when that world is producing daily incitement to murder of Jews. 
And I How can you explain this? Yeah, let her answer, please. And no. I am saying that those images are wrong. How many more ways do you want me to say it? I'm not asking you for your are... opinion of the images. I'm asking you to explain why it is that we have such a disproportionate attention paid by the Islamic world to a set of cartoons which, are the, although yes, one we've, could... Yes, we've been through okay. the argument. Well, let's look well, at where I'm it sorry, starts. Joseph doesn't seem to understand the argument. That's well, let her answer. I don't need to be patronised. Thank you, Melanie. But five months ago, these images took place. We're not dealing with an image today or a situation today. Five months ago that they took place. Not in a nice little innocent context. They, co they took in the context of a right-wing newspaper in a country which since 2002 has been in in instigating legislation against its minorities, Muslims specifically in mind, of which at the time Stephen Smith of the Beth Shalom Holocaust Centre in the United Kingdom called wandering at the fascist nature of these legislation in 2002. And we, we look at in Denmark, 50% of Danes don't want to have any contact with their ethnic minorities and of those leaving school under the age of 16 with no, uh, 16 with no qualifications, 56% of them from ethnic minorities. So what you have is a context in Denmark with a right-wing paper producing images to inflame. Clifford Longley. I, I heard it suggested that the um, insult to the name of the Prophet feels to a Muslim like something that's quite hard for us in the West to understand. It feels like um, fouling your mother's grave or spitting on the image of your baby or something of that kind. Can you tell us how you feel as a Muslim woman when you f find that there's been some defamation of the Muslim of the Prophet's reputation? For me, it's not just the Prophet Muhammad. For me, it's all prophets of God. I mean, even when Jesus was portrayed, peace be upon him, was portrayed in Jerry Springer, I found that so appallingly offensive. I really did. It's all prophets. It's not just Muhammad. Um, but I think that we don't have iconography generally in the in the Muslim but I hear you saying it's appalling and offensive <laughs> but I, fi I find that there has still a great barrier of understanding those words don't convey what you're trying to convey they don't tell the rest of us why exactly this is such a key issue I think for me it's more than to just to do with with blasphemy I actually think I think it's to do with our I think the feelings are rooted in the modern context of where we are today the feeling of being um, pushed against a wall because of the stereotypes that you feel stuck in daily actually what you feel is it's not just the prophet who's being being slandered here it's it's yourself, your your entity, because you are constantly cast in that in that role, and it's not a nice position to be in. Stephen Rose, I want to come back to um, an interesting contrast between what Professors Ramadan and Afshar said. For Professor Ramadan, it was important that Muslims in the West learn to respect Western values and to live um, in a more the, the, the context of a more secular Western society. Harry Afshar was saying the reverse, and that is, you cannot expect Muslims in the West to actually accept Western values, and yet you've heard, and everyone has heard the importance of the issues of free speech, the fact that in the West you can satirise, you can do cartoons and so on. Um, shouldn't we also be able to expect Muslims in Britain to actually expect to, to, to behave in this way, not to carry slogans saying behead, kill, etc.? I think there's a number of issues. The first issue is that I'm a Westerner. I have a Western culture, and I think what you see emerging is a, is a British Islamic culture, um, in the same way that you had a Chinese Islamic culture emerge within 60 years, away from the Arabian uh, Islamic culture of the original uh, revelation. And so I don't think that we should be surprised that you see a British Islamic culture, a European Islamic culture, what we need emerging and growing. And cultures change, you know, they're not stagnant or, 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 and they're not fixed. And I think that that's incredibly important, that we accept that that has a role to play, that there's a synthesis of cultures going on in Britain today that, that is to be highlighted and enjoyed. Um, in relation to that, that that's going to take an organic process. And of course, because it's within an international and global context where all cultures are affected by our international and global context. It's, it's, it's sometimes hard to see how that emerges. Sarah Joseph, thank you very much indeed. Um, how can we synthesise some of these um, uh, things that we've been told by our witnesses? Professor Ramadan was, was, was talking about, uh, about how these cartoons emphasise divisions, uh, where in reality we have common values, uh, he said. Melanie Phillips, but that's the point, isn't it? I mean, uh, surely the, the argument here is that perhaps we don't have common values when it comes to, certainly to freedom of expression in these sensitive areas. Well, I think that's right. I mean, um, freedom of speech, freedom of expression is a key value for the West. Personally, I don't think it is indivisible. Um, relating to something Stephen said earlier, I would limit it in certain circumstances, but I would limit it where I believe uh, uh, it would lead to where, where, where it is, is, is inciting violence. Um, and I think in, in a liberal society, it's very difficult to know where to draw that line, but that's where I would draw it. Um, 
I think what we're seeing now is a really appalling reversal situation in which we have people on the streets of London and elsewhere inciting violence. We have people running around Europe uh, and the Middle East trying to hunt down Europeans in order to kidnap, kidnap them. And that you know, goes almost without comment, uh, mm. while uh, an insult... Um, is cons you know but, well, we're but, all but, but, earnestly debating whether we should um, yeah but, 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 but Ian uh, uh, Professor Afjar said uh, that that was simply words uh, you know they behead these people and you know cut off their hands that's simply words whereas the cartoon is something of, uh, so a much deeper level of offence do you go along with that uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't personally uh, go along with it no but I think it is the issue uh, I think that the issue is the one that Clifford defined which is whether there is something. Uh, unique or very special about the issue of offending religious view, religious conviction. Uh, and if you take the comparison which Sarah Joseph raised between Jerry Springer the opera and these cartoons, I don't find it difficult as a Christian uh, to uh, enjoy the satire of Christ in a nappy uh, because uh, I'm comfortable uh, with uh, the idea that there is something strange about uh, um, uh, a civilized a world being redeemed by a baby uh, th there's a level of you know you can get you, you can be interested by that uh, and uh, uh, what uh, what's hard I think for us to understand is the question that Clifford was putting which is what what is it about this which is so offensive it just doesn't make but sense. But we don't have those insights into the religious mind anymore, is that your argument? I, <clears throat> partly it is. I think there's, there's this growing gap I referred to at the beginning. Um, Western secular mind and the religious mind are finding it more and more difficult to talk to each other. And I find part of the difficulty is that the Western secular mind is not listening. And is that losing the ability to listen? It's not just a lack of will. Well, well I am a West secular mind, but I, I think... You are a secularist. Indeed I, indeed I am. And anti-American, so you're torn in No, two, no, I'm, two not an anti, I'm not an anti-American. I'm against a considerable number of aspects of American policy, but that's a different issue. And that's, but I think it's right that you should say that, because it makes precisely the point which Halle Afshar was making, that these episodes do not happen in a vacuum. The, the cartoons were not produced in a vacuum, they were produced in a right-wing racist context, and the aftermath and the consequences of those cartoons have not happened in a vacuum. The newspapers and the countries which, which, which republished them, indeed the, the, then the whipping up of the sort of hysteria, test area that we've seen amongst young mm. men in this country, young Islamists in this country, seems to me to be an example on both sides of whipping up a controversy in order to produce, on the one <laughs> hand, Islamophobia, on the other hand, a sort of a holy war. Uh, but we've had two Muslim uh, pr professors, uh, Hali Afjar and uh, Professor R R Ramadan. Um, Professor Ramadan was talking about and has talked about the idea of a reformation amongst b becoming British Muslims, so to speak. And yet Hali Afjar uh, actually said, whether she meant it in quite this context, I don't know, that you can't expect Muslims to behave as Westerners. Well, that's well, how do you actually reconcile those that, two that's things? Exactly, that's exactly that's, 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 uh, I actually go along with Tarek Ramadan in this context, and I think that Hali Afjar is wrong. We actually have to move to a situation in which we are uh, as respectful of Western values of people living in, in Western secular society as, Muslim, as we're expected to be of Muslims in Muslim society. Really? I think we should all respect religion, and I think that gratuitous insult against religion of, of all kinds is to be deplored. But the issue here is not insult. The, the, the issue here is do you suppress, do you censor, do you threaten, do you intimidate, do you murder? That's what we're up against. Yeah. And the argument has moved on completely or, from or, whether we should or, um, insult or not religion. Yeah, what or, we're dealing with here is an insurrection against the values of the West to do with the protection of life and liberty. Let's leave it there. That's it for this week. From our panel, Ian Hargreaves, Melanie Phillips, Stephen Rose... Clifford Longley and from me. Until the same time next week, goodbye.